if we have a big company and this big company buys a 30% stake in company A, then this is referred to as an investment in an associate company. To put it more formally, an investment is considered an associate company when the investor, in this case big company, has or can exercise significant influence but not control over the investee's business activities. Here the investee is this company. Generally it is presumed that if the investment is somewhere between 20% and 50% then there is influence, in fact there is significant influence but there isn't control because generally for control a 51% or greater stake is required. Other than this general ballpark of 20% to 50% there are other items which can suggest the fact that there is significant influence and those items are shown here. Representation on the board of directors, in other words they are representatives from big company who sit on the board of company A, participation in the policy making process, material transactions between the investor and investee, interchange of managerial personnel and technological dependency. So if these or any of these hold then that would suggest significant influence. Another categorization is joint ventures. This is where two companies say A and B jointly run a certain operation. So for example A is a company that is based in another country. It comes to India and sets up a joint venture with company B which is based in India. With a joint venture there is a contractual agreement between two or more parties and when two or more parties form a joint venture each party is referred to as a venturer. The second characteristic is that the contractual arrangement establishes joint control of the entity which is created. The important aspect for this reading is that both for investments in associates and for joint ventures the equity method of accounting is required and over the next few slides we will understand the equity method in detail. To understand the equity method let us consider a very simple example. Let's say we have big company again and this big company buys a 20% stake in company X. Say that X is worth 100,000 and a 20% stake then is worth 20,000. So the investment made by big company is 20,000. Big company will show an investment of 20,000 on the balance sheet and this would be classified as an investment in an associate company. Let's say that during the year company X has a total net income of 100. What big company will do on its income statement is show its own share of income not the dividends. If the total income for X was 100 then 20% 20 of 100 is 20 and this is the number that will be shown on big company's income statement as income coming from the associate. Investment account reflected as a single line item on the balance sheet. All this means is that on big company's balance sheet we will just have one line item which represents the investment in X. Value of investment is beginning value which in my example is 20,000 plus the share of profit and in my example the share of profit is 20 minus share of dividend. Let's say that big company being 
an investor being a shareholder gets a dividend from X, say the value of that dividend is 5, then the overall value of the investment at the end of the year will be 20,000 plus 20 minus 5. The reason we have minus 5 here is the amount of dividend then goes and increases cash. So if we did not subtract this over here, then they would be double counted. In terms of categorization or classification, the investment is shown as a non-current asset on the balance sheet. And as you can see, this is one line consolidation. The value of the investment is shown as a single line on the balance sheet and as a single line on the income statement.